Hi, this is Pastor Jim, and welcome to this week's Active in Mission podcast. Uh, great to have you uh, with me today, and I want to start off with sharing with you some folks who are now on the Quick Start program. So as you well know, uh, those of you who have completed Quick Start yourself, we pray for those who come alongside in this journey of one more disciple. So let me just read off some names. These folks are down in Hayesville, North Carolina, and the first one is Jamie and then Michelle, Eric, Gina, John, and Joyce. They're all on Quick Start right now. They're about halfway through the program already as I announce it today. And uh, we'll be sharing that they complete in just a few weeks. So we're very, very excited about that. Would you pray? I want to mention those names again because I want you to pray for them. You see, when we do ministry with, with the AIM Company, we all do it together. We do many things together. We help people. We give. We preach the word, we disciple people, all that happens. So Jamie, pray for Jamie, Michelle, Eric, Gina, John, and Joyce. And uh, we just, I want to thank you for that. And I want to encourage them if they're listening to this podcast, uh, we wanted to give them a shout out. And we enjoy every single time one more person gets on Quick Start and becomes that one more disciple. Also, I want to give a shout out to a friend of mine. It's Dan. He is down in Florida. So Dan, if you're listening to the podcast... Uh, Dan just, he had texted me a couple weeks ago and I didn't put it on the last podcast, so I wanted to put it on this one, but he had just finished reading scripture through and he was starting again. Uh, and so congratulations, Dan. I mean, he'd read the whole Bible and we're just praising God for how he begins to work in people. So from Florida to wherever you are, people who are doing got my 15, uh, right here. If you, if you're not on got my 15, Go to our website, activeandmission.org. All you got to do is sign up for Got My 15. I will send you a letter of congratulations and this bookmark to remind you to read your Bible 15 minutes a day. So that's the challenge. Read your Bible at least 15 minutes a day. As you do that, you'll start to read. We even got Bible reading plans that you can use if you don't already have one yourself. And the one that we use, you just read about, it takes about 15 minutes a day to read it. Some who read quicker, a little less. Some who read slower, a little more. But it's right around that mark. And if you do those 25 readings a month, you will have read the whole Bible through in one year. And if you read a little bit more, guess what? You'll start reading it like myself, uh, just maybe a time and a half a year or twice a year. And not even trying to, just enjoying reading scripture so that's got my 15 so congratulations dan you stay in the word of god uh, i'm praying for my brother uh, him and his wife just been blessings to kathleen and i we thank them for that they're in florida now so anyway so anyway let's uh, get started in the word the word is mark uh, chapter 12 we're going to start at verse number 35 today verse number 35 by the way i'm pastor jim i don't uh, Jim Borgman, I don't announce my name every time, uh, but if you're a first-time listener, we appreciate you coming on, and uh, our AIM company, if you want to check us out at all or find anything about us, it's activeinmission.org, all right? God bless you. All right, I want to read our text, Mark 12, beginning at verse 35. Now, it's a very unique text today because uh, it has it has three definitive sections, but we're going to focus on the third section, all right? But I want to read the whole thing as I always do. It says this, While Jesus taught in the temple, he said, How can the scribes say that Christ is the Son of David? David himself, speaking by the Holy Spirit, declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. How then is he his son? Now we know that he came out of the lineage of David. So that's the reference there. But make it very clear, make it very clear, God, Jesus, is Lord of all. But that's the reference. Now understand what he was teaching. And the large crowd, to end verse 37, and the large crowd heard him gladly. He said to them in his teaching, Beware of the scribes who love to go about in long robes and love greetings in the marketplaces and the prominent seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets, who devour widows' houses, remember that phrase, devour widows' houses, 
and for a pretense make long prayers. They will receive greater condemnation. Now, the re one, one of the reasons he says that is because, look, you're a person of spiritual authority. And if you don't handle your spiritual authority with integrity and character and in the love of God for others, then what happens is there will be a higher price for you to pay. And so when he talks about uh, go about in long robes, uh, prominent seats, he's, see, they're, they're prideful. They're taking their position and using their position to their advantage. Remember what I said, who devour widows' houses, all right? So they're, they're, they're lording over people, and he says, that's why I say beware of them, because they're lording over their position and authority, and they're influencing people in a negative way, not an affirmative way in Christ. Let's go to the last section, and I want to talk about finances today in relationship to a widow who gave. Remember the reference to widow. Now listen to a story about a widow. Verse number 41. Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury. Many who were rich put in much. But a certain poor widow came and put in two mites which make a farling. He called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. They all contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had, her entire livelihood. Now, like I said, there's three distinct parts to this last section in Mark chapter 12. But I want to talk a little bit about today how God looks at our heart in relationship to our giving or our finances. All right? So let's, let's go back for just a minute. He said this. He said that the widow came and she put in two mites. Now, I did a little research on that. Two mites was about 1% of a denarius. A denarius was a day's, approximately a day's wage. And there's no perfect way to give an amount for that because culture changes, times change, and, and all of that. But possibly one author suggested this, that uh, it would be like putting in today like $1. Putting in like $1, okay? The ancient Greek word I thought was interesting is lepton, L E P. T-O-N. And it means a tiny thing. Just like a dollar today is a tiny thing. Now I remember when I was a kid, a dollar wasn't such a tiny thing. I loved it when I had a dollar because you could buy a whole lot of candy when I was a kid for a dollar. Okay, now you can't. You can't even get a candy bar at places for a dollar. All right. So, but back then you could. You could get a whole lot for a dollar. So, but today it's a tiny thing. In the Old English, it translates out might, M-I-T-E, like it has here in this text. It comes from our word crumb or a very small morsel. So really, we're, an we're, we're answering the question, how much is enough? I mean, what, what is God's expectation in relationship to our giving? Now, notice the distinction of how people gave. The rich put in much, which is not wrong. Let me just remind you, that's not wrong. The rich put in much. Jesus says, if you have more, you ought to share more. You ought to give more. Why? Because you have more to give. But notice what the distinction is. He said, she put in more than all of, not more than one of the rich people, but more than all of the rich people combined. Now, obviously, we know she didn't put in more in physical money. She put in a, pro we'll just say, she put in a dollar. Others were putting in thousands. Comparatively speaking, she put in a dollar. 
Many others put in thousands. Obviously, the thousands are much, much more than the dollar. But Jesus says, verse 43, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. Why? Because they contributed out of their abundance. She contributed out of her poverty or her need. Very interesting how Jesus assesses the gift. And also it's very interesting about the spiritual dynamic of the gift. Jesus said, he told, he told the rich young ruler, or the person we call the rich young ruler, he said, sell everything you have, give it to the poor, and follow me. What was he saying? I don't want any God before me. If I've got $5,000 in the bank and I want to give $500, I'm giving out of an abundance of $5,000, okay? I still have $4,500. Now, if somebody has 20 bucks and they give all that $20, as far as the amount from their heart, the Bible says that they gave more in the spirit realm Although I gave, I would have given more in the practical realm. We were taking an offering at one of our churches one time. We took up our, our regular offering. There was a $2 offering in there. Two $1 bills. There was much more money than that that came in, but there was just two $1 bills. I knew the situation. I knew the person, I knew the situation, and I knew that that $2 to them might be, you know, a dozen eggs if it was under $2 at that time, that, those, those things fluctuate, or a loaf of bread or something that they really, really needed. The Lord spoke to me that evening, and this is what He said. He said, Jim, the person that put in that $2 put in more than all of the other contributors tonight. Now, at that time, I mean, I knew about this text, but I had not studied this text in relationship to what I'm teaching you right now. But I believe what he's saying is, I believe that he's saying, look, I will have no other gods before me. I won't have the God of pride like, like those in spiritual leadership. I won't, I won't have uh, the God of money. I won't, I won't allow the God of fame. I won't allow any, the God of relationships, the God of being liked by other people. I won't allow anything, that's called idolatry, be before me. Now understand, I don't believe that those who were rich in this text necessarily gave wrong. Jesus didn't say they gave wrong. It, he just said she gave more. They might have been given a tithe. They might have been given uh, a, a, an offering like her. I, I don't know the circumstances surrounding it, but I do know this. Jesus said, in this case, she gave more. Why? Because they still had more to give. She didn't have anything else to give. I love how it says this. They all contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had, her entire livelihood. She didn't have any more to give. Very interesting to me, the dynamic of finances and our relationship to the Lord. It seems to be a lot more spiritual than I had ever thought it to be. I was kind of one of those guys at the beginning of my Christian journey that might say all the church wants is your money. Now I'm not that guy. Now I'm the guy that says, you know, Jesus wants everything you got, whether it's your money or whether it's your car or whether it's possessions or whether it's your family or whether it's your job or whatever it is or, or whether it's a podcast. He wants it. He doesn't want to be co-owner with you. He's the owner. He's not co-owner of the AIM Company. He's the owner of the AIM Company. That's what he says. And he says that if you love me, you release what you have 
back to me. Now, there's a whole lot more teaching I can do on this, but this spirit of giving really determines the value of the gift. She had the right spirit. She wanted to give Jesus everything that she could. And I thought, wow, what an attitude to carry around with us in life. Think about that in relationship to studying the Bible. Let's give Jesus everything we can in our studies. Let's give Jesus everything we can in our marriages. Let's give Jesus everything we can in our parenting. Let's give Jesus everything we can if we're, if we're a youngster or in college. Let's give him everything we can as, as, as a student. Let's just give him our, our entire livelihood and let's see what he does with it. Now this passage doesn't teach any blessing from it. But it certainly does teach the spirit and it, and it determines the value of what was given. Truly, God does not need our money. <laughs> it is a privilege for us to give. She understood that. She didn't have to give this. Probably no one expected her to give it. Certainly no one was looking for her to give it. I mean, if she only gave a dollar, we don't even hardly think about that. You see, giving is not for God because he doesn't have anything. Giving's for us. Because it, it helps us to remain in a sensitive state of obedience to God that he owns everything that we have and everything that we are. He then releases. He loves to release blessing back to his children. It doesn't say so in this passage, but I know God took care of that woman. I know that he handled that widow. I know because when you you cannot outgive God, you can't outgive him your time, you can't outgive him to the poor, you can't outdo him, you can't outlove him. He is God Almighty. We are to follow him and to release to him everything that we had. I mean, she was poor. Why was she poor? The, now remember, the Bible says she was a widow, okay? The religious leaders were taking advantage of widows, specifically their houses, says they devour widows' houses. Why? Because if their husband died in that culture, she had no way to earn income. She was poor. She had no husband to support her. You know, it gives me confidence, too, in my giving, whether I have a little bit or whether I have a lot. God, I can please God in my giving with the right Spirit. I know we all have different financial statuses. I understand that. Some people make a whole lot more money than others. But we can all, whether we have a little, whether we have medium, or whether we have a lot, we can all have the same spirit of giving that this poor widow taught us through Christ. And I want to encourage you today, if there's something that you're maybe holding back from God. Maybe it's not money, but maybe it's something else you're holding back from God, a bad attitude. Maybe you're just holding that grudge because you don't want to give that to God. Release it to God. He wants your entire livelihood, not just your finances. He wants all of you. Don't hold back anything from God. I know it demands that you trust Him, but I, that's the joy because you cannot fake God out and you cannot out trust Him. I'm telling you, if you learn to trust Him, He will take care of you. He never fails. Oh, some people make us promises and they don't, they don't hold their end of the bargain, but guess what? When you do what God asks you to do, He always keeps His word. God is so powerful. He's so mighty. And He wants to help you and I today. I've, I've learned something new. I teach on finances a lot. And, but I've learned something new. This spirit of giving I said, you know, I want every gift I gave today, as a matter of fact, as I'm, I gave today, and I said, I said, Lord, I want my gift today to have the value of this widow's gift. Can you say that about your life today? Let's work on that together, shall we? I want to pray with you 
today because I know somebody's just, I, I feel like as I'm speaking today, somebody's going to be listening and you're just going to sense or feel that you want to hold something back from God. You, you, you know it's not, your heart's not perfectly right. You want to hold it back from God, but God's saying, release it to me. The spirit of the giving, not the amount of the giving, but the spirit of the giving releases the value of the gift. And so let's give together. Not just finances, but let's give together our lives, our time, our, our, our whole heart, our attention to detail, whatever it is. Let's release it to God with the right heart. So the value of our gift is excellent. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this time. Lord, as you have taken our hearts now, and you have challenged us with this story in Mark chapter 12 about this widow who gave. And the Bible says she gave her entire livelihood. Lord, I pray that we will give our entire lives, mind, will, and emotions, time, possessions, and everything else that we have. Lord, let us release it to you. So the value of the gift is that of excellence. Lord, I pray for every person listening. I pray that as the Spirit of God would know clearer and greater when a person is listening to this teaching, they will receive it at just the right moment and it will touch their heart for the kingdom of God. Father, I thank you in advance for the success and the results and the fruitfulness of your word that never returns void. Thank you for that, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's teaching out of Mark chapter 12. Uh, David will be back on. We're going to do some more podcasts. Uh, David Sandlin's not going to be just a, a guest. He's just going to do this podcast with me several times a year. And uh, But we'll continue our paragraph by paragraph study as the Lord opens avenues and doors for that. Hey, I haven't said it in quite a while, but if you're a first-time listener, just go to... Uh, just go to the uh, our, our page. You can go to our website, activeemission.org. You can go to YouTube and hit subscribe for us. You can hit like for us. All that helps us get the message of the gospel out. But if you want to know more about the AIM Company, go to the website, activeemission.org. All right? You can get on Got My 15 there. Um, there's Bible reading plan there. You can donate there. Thank you to all those who pray for us, all those who fill out the Holy Spirit to give. It makes a huge difference in the lives of people. It makes a huge difference in Jamie's life, Michelle's life, Eric's life, Gina's life, John's life, Joyce's life, and Dan down in Florida reading the Word of God like never before. So that's why we give, so we can obey God and bless others. Thank you so much for today. I will look forward to the next podcast with you. God bless.